Get your concealed carry permit online in one hour with armamerica.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, hey, I'm Luke from Arm America. Go ahead and click the link below the video to go to our website. It'll just be much easier to follow along with everything that way. How can you get your concealed carry permit in New Hampshire? Luckily for you, you live in a state that embraces constitutional carry. That means that you don't actually need a concealed carry permit to be allowed to carry a concealed handgun in your state. Unfortunately though, it doesn't let you carry a concealed handgun out of state. If you'd like to expand the number of states that you're allowed to carry in, your best option is probably to get a Virginia non-resident permit. And the reason for that is because a Virginia concealed carry permit is actually one of the strongest concealed carry permits. It has reciprocity with 35 other states, meaning that it can be accepted as a valid concealed carry permit in 35 other states. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna assume that you are over 21, you don't live in Virginia, you're not a criminal, and you wanna get a Virginia non-resident concealed carry permit. Our goal at Arm America is to simplify the process. We've gotten it down to three easy steps and it only takes about an hour. The first and most time consuming step is to get a certificate for completing a firearm safety course. This can be done completely online. The second step is to fill out form SP248 and the third step is just gathering a few papers and mailing it all in. Basically, it's easy stuff like a scan of your driver's license and a photo of you to use on the permit, things like that. This set of videos walks you through each step to make it as simple as possible. Go ahead and click next step below when you're ready to get started. The first step to getting your Virginia non-resident concealed carry permit is to get a certificate for completing a firearm safety course. This can be done completely online. Go ahead and click below the video. You're gonna see a button that says, get certified now. Click on that and it's gonna open a link to Virginia Concealed in a new tab. Virginia Concealed has a great firearm safety course. So we're just gonna scroll to the bottom of the page here and you'll notice that there is a video right here that says safety training course, Virginia Concealed Carry Permits. So this is a 40 minute video and you're gonna go ahead and hit play on that. Watch the whole video. And then at the end of that, you can click here and say, I agree to the terms of use. Click here to begin your test. And this opens an 11 question open note test here. Once you fill out this test, you can click to submit your results and then you'll have to pay. It's great because they let you take the course for free and redo the test as many times as you want until you pass. Once you pass the test, you pay, it's like $60 and they email you your certificate for passing the firearm safety course. The course is like 40 minutes long and it has a ton of great information in it. And Virginia Concealed really does want you to watch the entire video. They don't want you to just click and then skip to the test. But if during the test, you're having a little bit of trouble remembering or anything like that, uh, since it is an open note test, we have an FAQ here on the bottom of step one that you can look to and that's just got a lot of helpful hints and reminders for things just in case you missed it and it's, you know, taking you a while to find it scrubbing back through the video. So feel free to refer to that if it's helpful. Once you've finished the 11 question test and you've been emailed your certificate, you're ready to move on to step two. So go ahead and scroll back up on our website and then just click on next step to move on to step two. The second step to getting your non-resident Virginia Concealed Carry Permit is to fill out form SP248. If you look on this page right below the video, you should see a button that says complete form SP248. If you're on a computer, which is the ideal way to do this, you can click on that and it's gonna open in a new tab where we can fill in the information. If you're watching this on a phone, it's gonna try to download it, which is a little bit more confusing. So I do recommend doing this on a computer. Um, but yeah, so let's look at this. So SP248 is the form that you need to fill out and this is the legal form that we're turning in. So uh, let me just go through how this works and try to help explain it. Of course, you need to fill it out accurately with your own information, but I'm just gonna sort of zoom in here and work on this so that you can have a bit of an idea of how it works. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna of course assume that you are not a Virginia resident. So I'm gonna go ahead and check non-resident here. You can leave file number blank. And then let's come down to step number one here. We got full legal name. So you're gonna put in your first name. I'm just gonna type in first your middle name and then your last name. Here you're gonna put in your birthday in step two. Let's just type in some random digits here. You're of course gonna use your real information. And then you're gonna put in your street address here. Uh, city, county, state, and then zip code. And then also notice here that it wants you to attach a separate list of all the addresses that you have lived at in the past five years. Uh, we're gonna come back to that later, uh, but yeah. So also notice here, you've got the option to add your email. I would definitely recommend doing that because then they can just send you an email in five years when your permit's about to expire and you can re-up it uh, rather than having to deal with it the other way. Here they wanna know a little bit of information about you, how tall you are, 
um, weight, sex, race, hair color, eye color, all that good stuff, and social security number. Now, they're not actually allowed to require you to put your social security number, and uh, some people may not want to do it, but I would suggest that you put your social security number because it helps keep it from... Uh, it just makes it easier because they're trying to verify your information and make sure who you are, and they can do that without your social security number. But if you just give them your social security number, it makes their jobs easier, so you're more likely to get your permit faster. Uh, so put in your social security number there, and place of birth, you're going to enter that. Country of citizenship, of course, is going to be the United States. Uh, phone numbers, and then here we're on to this whole section. This whole section here is basically just... Are you a bad guy? So I'm assuming that you're not a bad guy, in which case you're just going to check no on all these boxes. But let's go through what they are real quick, just in case. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Blah, blah, blah. No. Have you ever been convicted of a misdemeanor? Blah, blah, blah. No. Have you been committed to the custody of the Commissioner of Behavioral Health? Blah, blah, blah. No. Have you been acquitted by reason of insanity? Blah, blah. No. Have you been involuntarily admitted to a facility or ordered to mandatory outpatient treatment if you were subject to a temporary detention? Blah, blah. No. Have you received mental health treatment or substance abuse treatment in a residential setting? Yada, yada, yada. No. Are you the subject of or named as a respondent in a restraining order or protective order? No. Are you addicted to or an unlawful user or distributor of marijuana? No. Are you an alien not lawfully admitted for a permanent residency in the United States? No. Have you been discharged from the armed forces under dishonorable conditions? No. Are you a fugitive from justice? No. Do you have any criminal charges pending? No. Have you within a three-year period immediately preceding the date of blah, blah let's just, we're just gonna say no to this one. Uh, do you currently have a valid resident concealed handgun permit? I'm gonna assume that of course you do not because this is your first time applying for one, so we're gonna say no. And then down here you can see it says signature of applicant. You're going to go ahead and print this form out and sign it physically with a pen, not just type it in here. And the date you can enter yourself on the computer or you can write it in uh, either way. Now all this other stuff forms, this just relates to mostly the uh, criminal stuff. And since we said no to everything, it doesn't really apply. So still include it with your papers, but just completely blank is fine. Uh, form one, form two, we're going to ignore all this stuff. And then these notices down here are just like uh, additional information with the stuff that we filled out above. So you can read it if you'd like, um, but if you've already filled it out, you're probably good. And then this criminal background investigation thing, that's not for you. Someone else is going to fill that out, but you do want to include all of these papers. So even if they're just blank, you just all four pages, print them out, and it's really only the first one that you have to write anything on. So great. Uh, we've filled out the form here, SP248. And uh, there is one more thing though. Now remember up here at step three, it says to attach a separate list of all the addresses that you've lived at. We're gonna go ahead and click back and you'll notice there's a little button and addresses. Now you can just type this out yourself manually in Word if you'd like, but uh, just to make it convenient for you, we've got a little button here. If you click on that, it's gonna download a Word document called addresses and you can just click on that and it's gonna go ahead and open in Word. And this is just a template to make it easier for you. So you click Enable Editing, and you're just going to update this with your addresses. There's a little note saying that. So we're going to get rid of that, that little note line. And if you've only lived at one address in the past five years, that makes it easy. Just type your one address and then delete all the other ones. Uh, but if you've lived at multiple addresses, one address per year, then you're going to just enter all of them. And then, you know, say it was only three addresses, you'd fill these guys out and then just get rid of these last two because they don't apply. And then you're going to print this document out as well and then include it with the rest of your paperwork. So once you've done all that, you are finished with step number two. You filled out the form. You should already have your certificate from step number one. And then you've got your addresses sheet. So print all that stuff out and uh, you are ready to move on to step number three. Go ahead and go look under this video. There should be a button called next step. So just go ahead and click on that and I'll see you over at step three. The third step to getting your non-resident Virginia concealed carry permit is to just gather a few papers and then mail it all in. So by now you should have a certificate for completing a firearm safety course, which you got in step one, and a completed form SP248 that you filled out in step two, along with the addresses sheet that you're gonna include with it. Go ahead and print all those documents out if you haven't already and sign form SP248. Once you have all that paperwork, the certificate form SP248 and the list of addresses that you've lived at in the past five years, there are just a few more things to gather before mailing it all in. You need to print 
out a photocopy of a government issued photo ID, something like a driver's license or a passport. So go ahead and print that out take that paper and then put it with all your other papers. You also need to include a two inch by two inch photo of yourself taken within the past six months for them to use on the permit. While you could technically take this picture at home, there are a whole lot of requirements that you need to meet. So I'd highly recommend just going to Walmart or Walgreens, pay them like six bucks and have them take it for you. Once you have your two inch by two inch passport photo, take it and stick it with your stack of papers to mail in. The next thing you need to do is get fingerprinted. It sounds a little bit intimidating, but it's actually super easy. Just Google fingerprinting services near me and you'll see a whole bunch of results. Go ahead and pick one and go in and get your fingerprints taken. It should cost less than $50. The important thing to get from this is your fingerprints on applicant fingerprint card FD258. Virginia does not accept electronic submission of fingerprints. They'll only accept your fingerprints if you include applicant fingerprint card FD258 with your prints on them when you mail everything in. So make sure to leave with a copy of applicant fingerprint card FD258 with your prints on it take that card and then put it with the rest of your papers. The final thing is just to pay the application fee, which is $100. You can pay with a cashier's check or a money order made payable to the Virginia State Police. And you can get money orders at just like the post office or Walmart. You basically just pay the amount that the money order is for and then write out who it's to. So go ahead and take that money order or cashier's check and include it with the rest of the papers to mail in. And that's it. So just as a checklist here, you should be including a certificate for completing a firearm safety course, a filled out copy of form SP248, along with an attached sheet with all the addresses that you've lived at in the past five years, a photocopy of a government issued photo ID, along with a two inch by two inch passport photo for them to use for you on the permit, your fingerprints on applicant fingerprint card FD258, and a money order or cashier's check for the application fee made out to the Virginia State Police. Now you're just gonna take all that, put it in an envelope, and mail it to the correct department of the Virginia State Police. To get the correct address, you can go ahead and click the button below this video labeled address and that'll take you to this web page. You just want to scroll down a tiny little bit and this is the address right here. That's it. Slap some stamps on it, throw it in the mailbox, and your concealed carry permit should arrive within a month or two. If our website's been helpful in really simplifying the process for you, consider making a donation. We're totally community funded and we're trying to reach as many people as possible. Also, if you have any friends that are interested in getting their concealed carry permit or you know someone who's just turned 21, make sure to link them to our site, armamerica.org. All right, guys, well, that's it for the video. Thanks for helping make America a safer place.